at Brecht and McKay and Steve Kirby present on the role of blended learning as implemented in McKay's pilot Western Art course and discuss how the success of the course led to the creation of a faculty development class that encouraged faculty to redesign their courses for blended delivery. I'm Steve Kirby, Director of Instructional Technology at McDaniel College. I'm Brecht McKay, also McKay. <laughs> and we're splitting this. We're going to do, I'm going to do the first little part of it, and we're going to do the middle part, and I'll, I'll wrap up. It's designed for blended learning. Our primary, uh, the, the idea that we have, our, our, our point of view, our, the way we've tried to solve the problems, tackle the problems, deal with the issues, and get better, is through design. If we have one message, it's, it's uh, how to do design. Our little of uh, the session here, we've broken into three areas. The initiative, um, and then the pilot, I'm going to talk about that, the pilot class, and then I'll talk a little bit about PDL 100, which was the faculty training piece. The initiative. It came out of some conversations uh, that I had with the provost. Uh, Gretchen will talk about some conversations she had with the president. And we just, you know, we, we are, as a small liberal arts college in Westminster, Maryland, we attract, we, we market ourselves, we attract, we teach, we deal with primarily the 18 to 20 year old campus based student. That's our instructional model. The instructional models such that we have them have evolved to, to meet that demographic. We know that demographic is dwindling. We want to look towards a larger demographic as, as, as the 18 to 22 year olds change. I know they're changing now, but as, especially in the next few years, we want to expand uh, our student access. We want to expand our own institutional capacity. We think if we only teach to the campus-based 18 to 22 year old, and that's all we know how to do, mostly transmissive lectures, interactive lectures, classroom-based stuff, we think that will hurt us in the long run. So, how do we start to, how do we start to evolve? <clears throat> well, get the design right, at least. I mean, we read all the books, we read, we, we read the, the articles, we looked at the research, we looked at the theory. Uh, we certainly know that for the most part, we want to put content online and interaction face-to-face -face and reflection online. We have those sorts of things. We got that. Those are kind of does now. D-U-H-S does. Uh, but the design right, and our hope is that if we get the design right, then we can construct classes, build classes uh, that can be delivered three different ways, fully face-to-face, -face, hybrid blended, or fully online, with some tweaks in the interactive bit. But the idea is that the same class that the instructor hopefully will teach online in the future will be the same class that they teach hybrid in the future and the same class they teach face-to-face -face in the future because we're not changing our campus-based model. We want to expand it and have different channels. So it's all about design. Um, those of you who are probably familiar with this, if you're if you've done anything in instructional technology over the years, if we have instructional designers in here, design strategy, essentially backward design, you probably <coughs> that's the Wiggins and McTie approach. Those little red dots are outcomes. This is a visual representation of that. This design, this is instructional design in 90 seconds. Um, outcomes, of course, you take the outcomes from a course, we chunk it into modules, we create learning units. We don't march through weeks. We don't try to, the idea is to get away from marching through time. We have a topic this week, we have a topic next week, we take a, we take a test and then we march through more content. We construct learning units. Each unit has its own set of objectives. Cumulatively, those little red dots are the, the whole, <coughs> the, the, the total objectives of the class. But each learning unit, as we design the class, we select the readings that help students meet the outcomes. We select the activities that help the students meet the outcomes. We come up with an assessment that gives them the opportunity to demonstrate they've met the outcomes in a learning unit structure instead of a weekly structure. This is the idea so that we're developing and designing classes that are not just campus-based, but can be done on multiple, uh, multiple ways. <clears throat> so instructional design in 90 seconds, that's hard to do. But that was my best shot. <laughs> Chunk and a line. Chunk and a line. Um, a quick nod to the community of inquiry framework. Anyone who's done online here, certainly on this is Ron across Garrison, Anderson, and Archer. I just throw it up here quickly to let you know that we think also about social presence, cognitive presence, and teaching presence. 
our approach is to try to construct classes as places that enable interaction, whether it's an online, face-to-face, -face, or hybrid. So that's a quick, breathless look at Garrison Anderson and Archer. Our focus is place. And I'll turn it over to Gretchen. You did that quickly. <laughs> So, um, which one do you want to do? Uh, the one the okay. um, so first of all, I have to say, uh, I'm an art historian at McDaniel College. I've been there 15 years, and Steve Kirby's been there 16 years, so I just want to say almost everything I've learned is from Steve Kirby. <laughs> so this is the first time we've taken our show on the road, so it's kind of been fun uh, to do that. So I just, all that he just kind of went through, I was like, yeah, 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 I need help, you all of that. So my pilot class kind of came about because our president came to a chairs meeting. I'm chair of our department, which is art and art history. And he kind of um, gave a challenge, I guess, to the chairs and said, can we think of a way to offer intro classes in the different majors using technology in a different way than just the traditional way we've been doing it? And I was sitting there and I was like, I can. Uh, so I approached the provost and I said, look, I would really like to try to figure out a way to do a blended class. Like I know we market, like I, I, Steve's talking sort of in the future about how McDaniel want, might want to position itself, but I'm teaching now. And we're marketing the students that they're going to get close personal interaction, they're going to have face-to-face, -face, they're going to get to know me, all that stuff. So I said, now, I've taught online, which we have as a summer program. I've taught flipped. And so I was like, this is like the next thing. I haven't done this. So I think I can do a blended class for introductory art history, so the, kind of like the uh, caves to cathedrals class that a lot of students take for uh, just a liberal arts requirement, and it's also required for our major. So what I did was I said, um, you can actually say down. Yeah, I don't even know what I'm doing. So I'm an art historian, but I never use a flicker. So, <laughs> um, so what I did was I said I want to teach to 50 students in two different sections. I taught online an upper level course on Byzantine art uh, for a consortium. And one of the things that we found in the survey for that project, which was a two year project, was that students really love the flexibility that the online world affords them. Of course, I was a little disappointed when I heard that finding because I had scoured the internet for great online content for the Byzantine art class. And I'm like, flexibility, that's all I get. <laughs> but then I started to realize that this is really important for students that have jobs, that are, are pursuing multiple majors, which on, on our campus, almost all students are trying to do like two majors and a minor. They're doing so many things that to have the flexibility of the class is actually really important to them. And so I kind of got over myself. Um, so the idea was that we have a 90 minute time codes two times a week. And I said, we're gonna have one section on Tuesday, and one section on Thursday, and I'll, I'll get to one of the difficulties um, that we found out after doing this. Um, so 25 students in each, they really were doing the same things, but we had modules, so the chunking, I love that word that I learned from Steve, we, I chunked it up. So we had, um, I guess about, um, um, I don't want to go that that far, um, we had about, um, what did we say, like three to four modules or five modules that were about um, three to four weeks each. And I followed exactly what he said before, started with my learning outcomes. What do I want each, the students to know from each module? What are they going to read? And what are they going to watch? So I'm really lucky because Khan Academy has a whole art history unit that was put together by two art historians who got a grant to put together a free online textbook of videos. And when I first heard about it, I was skeptical about everything. So I know I'm sounding like, oh yeah, I took to this like, you know, fish to water. But usually when, when I work with Steve, this is how our conversations go. Well, you could try this. No. We keep talking. I'm like, well, actually, yeah, I could do that. So we were laughing yesterday that I'm kind of like not. There's at least two more no. Yeah, there is. There is. No, no, no. <laughs> and then, well, maybe. Yeah, we were laughing yesterday that I'm an early adopter, but an early adapter. Because I never do it exactly like it can be. But... When I saw these videos, I was skeptical and I said, all right, you know, buy you tapestry, what do you have? You know, show me. You know, and I'm listening to it and I'm like, oh, that's pretty much what I said. It was a little humbling. It's just like, wow, like I have nothing really different to offer this. So this is what the students did in the online class. The content was delivered online. So they had to uh, watch the videos, read text. Um, there were some things in addition to the Khan Academy stuff, but that was the, the most of the content uh, area on the online portion. They also had discussion boards, so they had to answer questions and get involved in a discussion. They also had a reflection piece, so it was like a reflection blog about what they were learning. 
And then we had the face-to-face -face time. So because, again, we're a small liberal arts college, we're marketing that they get to see me. Um, I didn't want them to only experience me virtually. <laughs> I wanted them to actually come and do things. And so that's where my flipped classroom um, experience, when I flipped this class like two years ago, that really came in handy because I had to come up with active learning, um, things that we were going to do that would really have the students interacting. Uh, I used um, short reacting games. Uh, for instance, there's a, a short game on should the Elgin marbles go back to Greece. So when we were in the Greek module, or Greek and Roman module, they, find, they, they had an, ex an experience that, oh, this isn't just old art that somebody dug up that's in a museum. There's like issues around it. Um, I'd like to work up something about you know, the destruction of content and the whole idea of should things go back and should they, you know, should they stay in museums, that kind of thing. I also did some peer review of their first paper. Um, because I didn't have to deliver any content, I was free for the 90 minutes to come up with really active, uh, engaging activities that, that they could do in the class. So I already mentioned we had about five three-week modules. A couple modules were four weeks. And we had about one meeting face-to-face -face per module. That was what we originally um, set up. So we learned some lessons from this. Um, it was overall pretty positive, but I, I sent all the reflections to Steve and I said, I'll be too hard on myself, so you read them uh, first and you tell me like what you think and then I'll wade in uh, and take a look at them. And he said it was pretty good, but we did learn some lessons. First is scheduling is hard, at least for our undergraduate population who are so used to Tuesday, Thursday, 2.40 to 4.10. So when I first had the Tuesday class in, they were like, so we don't, what do we, what, we don't come Thursday? No. Because I got another class coming. I was, suddenly I was like, oh my god, I'm going to have a train wreck. I'm going to have like 50 kids trying to get into a classroom that has 25 seats. Like this is going to be uh, a nightmare. And finally I said, I don't care what you do Thursday. You know, have a sandwich. Take a nap. Go online, but just don't come here. Uh, so that was, uh, that was difficult. They, they, while at the end of the term they actually said how much they appreciated having that flexibility because some of them were actually able to take a lab because they were science majors and yet they could still take this class because Thursday was the only lab they could get, so they took the Tuesday section. Uh, in the beginning, it was hard to get them to kind of figure out uh, what was happening. Another thing uh, that was a little bit difficult was, um, or not difficult, but one of the kind of surprises is they wanted to meet more often face-to-face. -face. So I thought they'd be happy, like not having to trump to class, but they said, we wish we had a little bit more of a chance to like make sure we were on the right track. So I'm going to be teaching this again in the fall in the same kind of setup, and so I'm already thinking about what are some things that I can do to test them or help them see uh, how well they're getting the material. So I'm kind of envisioning having um, quick rounds of can you identify the style? Uh, because that's a big thing in the <coughs> intro level. Um, and maybe in groups, you know, I flash some images of them from the different periods that they've looked at and then they maybe have a discussion about it and kind of decide what it is. So that's one thing um, that we're going to do based on uh, that finding. Uh, the other I um, already moved it, but the other lesson um, that I would say is you can't go back to the content if you don't have an idea for active learning. Like you can't go back and lecture or you just killed your class. Um, I went to a conference uh, about flipped, flipped classrooms um, several years ago before I tried doing a full class flipped. And there were these two guys from Southwest Virginia, they had the best accents, and they're like, if you lecture on the content you put online, you die. So I had, like, this was going through my mind like the whole time. I'm like, I don't want to die. Um, so it is challenging. Uh, and I would say build into your class, the backward design, build into it like before you even put the module together, what you're going to do in the face-to-face. -face. Because I don't know about you, but I get like about November and I'm pooped. And I can't come up with a freaking easy idea or creative idea or active learning idea to save my life. So I got to have them like packaged and ready to go. Occasionally I'll come up with something on the fly that I want to try, but uh, generally I have to have them built. So they're doing content online, they're coming to class or going online in discussion boards, that's kind of like the during. And then afterwards, they also are creating things. So a paper or um, just putting the uh, kind of triangle of learning, that we, the pyramid that we kind of all know. Um, I think the blended class le leads itself, lends itself to this even much more than my face-to-face -face classes. Uh, because one of the things that I did in this class, because it was a pilot, because it was kind of an uh, invention, is I decided I wanted the final exam to not be 
an exam exam. <laughs> you don't want it to be memorization because that's not what this class is about. I don't really think art history needs to be taught that way. So I decided to have a finale um, for the exam. They were kind of like, finale? <laughs> like, I'm like, just add an E. Um, so what I had to do, because I was, I was really thinking about the creating here. I wanted them to make something. I wanted them to do something, and I wanted to make something, because that was sort of like the theme that I was trying to get across the whole semester in the blended class. So I decided to have them uh, create board games on a period of art. And the one section played the other section's games. They worked in groups. And they had a rubric, and they had to uh, evaluate each other's game. And I had things like, you know, depth of art historical understanding, number of questions. They had, like, some minimum that they had to hit. But they were really creative, and they actually said, like, this was kind of fun uh, for, uh, for, like, the ending, of, uh, for the ending of the class. So we're now hoping to get other faculty at McDaniel to think about how they could take their discipline and kind of put it into this framework. And Steve is the mastermind behind that. So, so how do we duplicate what um, Gretchen did and how do we expand on <coughs> PDL 500, Pedagogy of Digital Learning 500. This is a, this is one of a, of a well, the answer to the question, you know, we think, is uh, training stipends and template. Training stipends and, and template. Stipends is a big deal in this. Uh, the, the, the provost put out a call after we had the, the, the pilot course. Faculty were interested in doing a redesigning their course for blended learning, the face-to-face -face course for blended learning. Uh, submit a proposal. We'll look at them. We did get more proposals than uh, we could handle. We could only handle five. That was our budget. You know, we paid an X amount of dollars for them to then take this this class, this class was written. The idea is you take the class concurrent with the class, you redesign your face-to-face -face class for blended. We cover design choices, pedagogical choices, technology choices, and video strategies. This is a, a screenshot of the actual class. Um, I'm gonna go a little bit faster. But the way The way we try to implement the design was the construction of, of templates. What I came up with for these five faculty members was a series of templates uh, structured in different ways. Scheduling is hard. Scheduling is hard. Scheduling is hard. Those of you who have studied blended learning research and theory know, oh, there's all kinds of research and theory on the best way to, to design and disrupt. What, what we don't know, there seems to be no research on what's the best way to schedule. That time thing is so hard. That really needs to be thought through. So each of these uh, templates that I constructed were, were set together, you know, appropriate for the credit hour and uh, activities here, activities there. I'm going to focus a little bit quicker. I'm going to show you some samples. Uh, here are six blended classes that I put together, all have for the faculty who are in this, uh, uh, we, call it, we call it an institute, blended learning. Institute, but they start with a fully designed class. Now, what, you know, if you click on any of those, they, it just takes you to Latin. But it's an it's set to enable backwards design. It's set to <laughs> we want to we want to switch content. We don't want content to be the point. It's important, but for, for instance, this, this whole business about content shift, again, used to. Let's march through content. Content was the king. Content was the idea. That was That's what we were getting into. What we're trying to do is say, well, kid, content is the means to the end. The end is what students can do with the content. It's the, whether, whether it's critical thinking, if I'm down to a minute, um, whatever it is, it's what students can do with it. So we shift content from being the point to the means to the end, and that's a big part of what the templates and the design do. Also, those of you who have studied a blended, line, uh, blended learning theory and research, know that, well, online redefines time. Um, it, it, it used to, time was the grammar. It, it, it kind of became an assumed grammar of our learning. It, it, it determined uh, when we did our work, when we turned in our work, when we interacted with the instructor, when we interacted with faculty members. Now online changes all that. So that's why content works best online, because there's no time restrictions. That's why reflection works best online, because there's no time restrictions, or at least there's more time to adapt for that. Uh, interaction, time and place, time and place.
design. We get the design right, we hope we expand our institutional capacity and expand our student access. And that's uh, Gretchen McKay there, and that's me there. Thank you.